the United States Steel Hour from New York. Next, a young boy tackles a problem he has let grow big enough to ruin his life. I did not. You're very mistaken. Well, I don't think it's so much to ask. Just once you could call me the day before. I'm not even dressed. Yes. I am not saying I'm so popular. I'm just saying you take things too much for granted. That's all. You got an appointment. What am I, last on the list or something? That's the way it sounds. I could be somebody's mud fence the way you're playing it. Yeah, well, give a little thought to morale, huh? Like in the army? You got an appointment or not? Yeah, uh, uh It's about the... Uh, well, listen, you know, I got feelings, too. I don't like being low girl on a totem pole. But what's with you? I haven't got all day. Yeah. Uh, what's the matter? Are you tongue-tied or something? So which way is it going to be? Hey, here comes Lenny. Move we'll back and we'll see you. Yeah, so we both go back tomorrow. We breeze in and we wrap it up. Okay, buddy? Got your job, Mickey. Oh, listen, wait a second. I, I forgot to tell you, I'm not taking that job at the uh, right off. First, I want to go with you to Associated first, okay? Well, what for? What for? What are you, yeah. chicken out? Huh? No. We work together, we don't work at all. That's the rules of the house, pal. You know, you, you don't <laughs> fool me, buddy. Well, who's trying to? No, seriously. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, come You're on. You're the only b -b -b boy the girls are Hey, honey. Oh, very funny, man. What's wrong with you two anyway, huh? What do we do? What do, what do you always make fun like that? What's he ever done to you? Everybody does it. Why can't we? Well, because everybody does it. Does that make it right? So how come he talks like that? Oh, come on. Go on, beat it. Honey? Hey, buddy. Ah, oh, there's a little kids through you. They don't know what they're doing. Just go back tomorrow to that place and tell them you accept that job. Yeah, okay, but don't get sore at me, pal. I'm not doing you any favors. I'm supposed to be your friend, remember? All right, all right. I didn't mean to get sore. I'm sorry, too, buddy. Look, you know, I, I never figured that guy would hire me. I mean, you should have seen me when he asked me what my grades were like. I was ready to jump up and run. Don't <laughs> ask what my grades are like. I never get that far. Yeah. Hey, this is great stuff. You know that, buddy? Yeah, I'm serious. It's real nice. I don't know how you can stay here and do it all the time. I'm in my room five minutes. I go bug house. This is nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'll bet. What are you going to do when you finish this set? I, I, I don't know. I, I got to start another one, I guess. You want this open or closed? Hey, will you answer me? Open or closed? I don't care. Hello, Hi. Mickey. How'd it go today? Well, I got a job, Miss Stevenson. That's wonderful. Yeah, but I don't know about Lenny. Congratulations are in order now, not long faces. Yeah, but he's so down in the dumps, ma'am. I, I guess it wasn't such a hot idea to go looking together after all. I didn't think it was when I heard about it. Didn't you? Well, you know, I, I thought it would help him not to feel so scared. Instead, he runs out on me. We can't always tell how our good intentions are going to turn out, can we? <laughs> no. Mickey, nobody's going to be hurt if you enjoy your success. Now, come on, come on, smile. Yeah, I'll drop back later, okay? Okay.
Ricky tells me you didn't find anything you liked today. <laughs> well, I went three whole months before I found this job, remember? Something will turn up soon. I've been saying that all along, Mom. Did you talk slowly? Yeah, I talked slowly. I had alternate words ready. Position wouldn't come out. I said, a job. An application wouldn't come out. I said, form. Mom, nobody's gonna hire a guy who stutters. Oh, that isn't true, Lenny. I know one thing. Sitting in this room, carving these chess pieces all day, that isn't the answer. What are all these papers? Anything important? These cards, forms, loads of them. You're supposed to fill them out, you're supposed to come back with them, and they'll consider you. They'll all tell you that. Well, then that's exactly what you should do. Your ball game's on. Mom, <laughs> am I turning into a whiner? Maybe, just a little. What am I gonna do, Mom? Well, right now you're going to listen to your ball game. And tomorrow you'll start all over again with the introductions and the interviews. And then suddenly, just like everybody else, you'll get your first job. And you'll work at it the best you know how. They won't give me a chance, Mom. They won't even listen to me. You'll get your chance, Lenny. You'll see. Personnel thinks he's doing making such a big deal out of a 6250 a week mail clerk job. What's he want? Since when do we interview mothers? That's what I want to know. What is this, Mother's Day? I'll have to be polite, Frenchie. What do you mean, polite? When wasn't I polite? You might be to knock a few heads together when I get back in here. And that means you, kid. Look at that complete collapse and so much to live for, too. Look out. And this one. Uh, cut it out, boy. Who's boss around here, Pete? You are. Cut it out, will you? Down, laughing boy. Down. No wonder why the wife says I'm crabby. Look what I have to put up with all day. Work! Work! Come on, get on it, fool! Let's go! Mr. McGinnis? Yeah? My name's Helen Stevenson. Your personnel director sent me. Did he call you? Oh, yeah. He called me. He said there was a job open in the mail room, and I'd like my son Lenny to have a chance at it. Oh, so why isn't he here? Well, you see, he stutters. And I thought he that... He what? Could... He stutters. That's why I'm here. And I may lose my nerve any minute. Would you uh, like to sit down? Thank you. Lenny graduated from high school a week ago, but he started looking for a job way back in April. He's a bright boy, Mr. McGinnis, but when he's nervous, he stutters badly. Oh. I don't even remember when it started. I began noticing it about the time his father died. Oh. Well, uh... Do you work yourself, Mrs. Stevenson? Yes, yes. I work nights for the phone company. It seemed to work out better for us that way. <laughs> and I, I saw your brochure when I came in this morning, and it sounded so friendly. I thought that, well, if, if you expected it of well, him, I don't if know you how knew. how friendly the brochure is, but it's going to depend on the boy himself. Oh, no, no, it isn't. It depends on how frightened Lenny is of you. Well, I can't promise anything. Well, won't you just see him? You don't have to give him a job if you don't think he's worth it, but won't you just see him? Well, he's, uh, he's never worked in a mailroom before, has he? No, no. Oh. Uh, uh, can he handle phone calls? Well, he... Oh. Oh, no. No, I didn't realize that... No, he hates the phone. I guess that lets him out, huh? <laughs> Okay, you get him up here, and we'll see what's what. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Oh, uh, I think it'd be better if he he didn't know I'd been up here. Oh, sure, sure. Thanks. Sylvia forgot the phone. Oh, down Sylvia for the forgot tally. the phone down for the Charlie, get it up there yourself, will you? They'll be on my back in five minutes. Yeah. Hurry it, will you? Pete, watch out for that post meter. I'm warning you. Come on, you guys. What are you getting paid for? Move it. Come on, let's get the show on the road so we can all go home. You didn't have to get up, honey. 
Oh, it was quiet on my switchboard last night, and I just wasn't sleepy this morning. I don't feel like breakfast, Mom. Well, then just drink your juice, dear. You know, Lenny, I have a hunch about today. I don't know. I, I just have a feeling about this one in particular. Which one's that? This one. I looked at it when I came in this morning, and I said to myself, associated, whatever you are, I know a young man in a lucky blue tie who's going to fit right into your organization. Yeah, well, they didn't uh, uh, roll out any red carpet yesterday. Oh, oh, that's all right, dear. I'm sorry, I'm a little shaky, I guess. Oh, sure, everybody who goes looking for a job shaky. But just remember, a guy's own two, two feet. Two feet are the only ones that he can stand on. <laughs> Get on out there now and fight the world. Give him a smile and knock him dead. You're always in there pitching, aren't you? <laughs> remember my hunch, associated. Oh, good luck, Lenny. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Barney, there's this guy. Hold it, Charlie, will you? Pete, shoot this upstairs right away, will you? But Barney, this kid is. Charlie, I heard you. I heard you. Tell him to keep his shirt on. Now, fellas, look. This has to get out right away. Tonight. You understand? Tonight? Move it. Let's get going. All right, what do you want? Mr. McGood. Honest? Yeah? Uh, the personnel office sent me down. Oh, well, uh, they give you a card? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Leonard Stevenson. Oh. Sit down, Leonard. Uh, what do they call you? Lenny? Yes, sir. So, you want to work in the mailroom, Lenny, huh? What? Well, I'd like to, yes, sir. Well, I tell you. If you like to goof off, this is no spot for you. But if you like to work, that's a different story. You like to work? Yeah. I, I like to work. Mm-hmm. Well, you're smart. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If you're smart, you're smart. You're smart? I'm pretty smart. Okay, now I'll tell you how things are with me, Letty. I figure there's room for only one loudmouth around here, and that's me. I get cranky, but I'm allowed to because I'm the boss. Now, does that bother you? No, sir. Okay. Now, I got no time for nonsense. You gotta stay until 9 o'clock, one night a week. That goes with the job. Yeah, well, that's, uh, perfectly all right. You're darn right it is. I have to stay three nights so we shouldn't kill an infant like you. Now, will it conflict with your mother's job? My mother's job? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I thought I saw it on a card here. Yeah, there it is. She works for the telephone company. You wrote it yourself, right? Oh, yes, sir. No, that's all right. Uh, something on your mind? Yes, sir. I, uh... I stutter a little bit. Pete! Watch that post video! You bust that thing, I'll bust your head! Charlie, watch him, will you? Keep your eye out. Now, what was that? I just said... I stuttered a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I heard bit. what you said. What I want to know is, so what? Well, I just thought you should know. Well, I think that you should know that if you work for me, you don't keep your jacket on. Where's that pretzel? What did I do with oh, the... Oh, uh... ah. Okay. All right. Let's get out into the mail room, and we'll meet some of the boys, okay? Hey, Charlie. Who mail room for you, Hey, Jack. Barney, what's this jazz about coming down for the tally every day? I'll tell you later, Sylvia. Well, what's the matter with the phone? Sylvia, I want you to meet the new mailroom boy, Lenny. Hi. Hi. Every morning at 10 a.m., Sylvia will come down for a tally. I thought you worked here, boy. Get that jacket off. Take a leg. Go. Charlie, I want to see you. Right here. Honestly, they change the system around here every time you turn around. Call off the overlay figures first. They're in the second column. It's a it says 23. I'll read if you like. Yeah, I, uh, I stutter a little bit. I didn't mean because of anything. I, I know the numbers and where to look for them. No, no, it'll be faster if you read. I'll tell you what. Suppose I read them for a week or so till you get acquainted, and then you'll know where to look. All right. Now, when I call off the numbers, you write them in these columns. Ready? Yeah. Warehouse teletypes 32, A13, B11, C12, 
C8. Did anyone tell you why I need these figures? <laughs> well, this goes to the costing report, and the letters are warehouse locations. We send them the orders, and they ship out the goods. Is this your first day? Mm-hmm. Just graduate? Yeah, last week. I quit a year ago. That was dumb. But I'm going to night school for the summer term. <laughs> I never thought he'd fall for it. He bent down, I squirted him right in the eye. Jeez, <laughs> oh, I can't stand him. <laughs> I talk too much, and, and you're too polite to tell me. No, go on. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care what they say down in that shipping department. They're always taking on another responsibility down there. I'm, I'm not... I'm not gonna do it. I don't... Say, Charlie, remember, you never saw his mother. She was never here. I know, I know. Okay. What you knocking yourself out for, Barney? Well, Charlie, when I was 15 years old, I weighed 210 pounds. Now, if you've been called fat so half your life, you'd understand. Well, we're finished. Anyone show you where the cafeteria is? Uh, no, not yet. Tenth floor. Maybe I'll see you there. All right. That's a, that's a very pretty tie. <clears throat> well, thank you. That's a compliment. Now you ought to pay one back. Oh, what kind? Any kind. Well, maybe I'll think of one tomorrow, huh? I'm Pete. Oh, uh, I'm Lenny. How are you? You like that chick, huh? Huh? It's Sylvia. You like that type? Well, I don't know. I, I just met she her. She thinks she's something, but she's nothing. If you say so. Hey, how about that wise guy? Sneaks off and lands a job first crack. Hey, you're rich now. Get yourself a lawyer. Oh, you're clever, pal. Real clever. I thought we'd have something to celebrate today, so I bought this cake. Yeah, Mom had a feeling about today, didn't you, Mom? Yeah, I guess I did. You know, I, I did it myself, Mickey. I did it myself. Well, that's not important. The important thing is for you to do a good job. I know and to stand on your own two feet. Well, I did. Oh, listen, they got bowling down there on Monday nights, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Except I can't go because it's my night to work late. Hey, listen, buddy. I'm picking the prettiest girl in my office. The first paycheck, we're double dating, okay? Easy come, easy go. <laughs> Any pretty girls in your office, Mickey? Um... I was too busy to notice. What? I was. <laughs> Listen, buddy, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna work my head off for that guy. He's gonna depend on me and he's gonna need me. But relax. The big executive, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know this tie? Oh, yeah. You mean your lucky one? Yeah. It made quite a big hit today. It did? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Somebody said it was a real nice tie. This is the United States Steel Hour. And now, Tex Antoine. Good evening. Say, how do you like your steel? Hot rolled or cold rolled? or perhaps you didn't even know there were such animals. Well, there's not much reason for you to know the difference between steels, even when you buy a steel product. The manufacturer has already picked the right steel for the job. Now, cold roll steel, for example, is the best thing yet for many home appliances, like perhaps your new refrigerator freezer unit. Cold roll steel is also the best thing for automotive body panels, fenders, and doors. It's also the best for, say, the cabinets in your kitchen, and also for many smaller housewares, like, well, maybe a new toaster. But even the best things can be improved, and they usually are in a competitive industry like the steelmaking industry, where there are over 80 companies constantly improving their steels in an effort to serve their customers better. And right now, we have a dramatic example of how competition leads to better steels and better things for all of us. For recently, U.S. Steel announced the construction of a new kind of mill. It will be the finest of its kind in the world, exclusively for producing wide coal roll steel sheets. Now, very briefly, this mill will run the steel not just through the conventional three, perhaps four roller stands, 
but through a new fifth set of rollers. Sound simple? Well, believe me, it isn't. This is a feat of modern engineering, a real first, and the results will be rather spectacular. For this mill can produce a wider sheet of thinner steel, so smooth, so flat, so uniform in quality, it will be unmatched by any existing product on the market. Now, where is this new mill being built? Right here, in Gary, Indiana, where it can serve from close by the great automotive and appliance manufacturing centers of the Midwest. Yet, this modern mill is only one example of many things that are needed to keep up in the competitive race. And how are they to be paid for? Well, partly out of profits. And when profits are not enough to meet these competitive demands, a business like U.S. Steel must borrow money and then pay that money back out of future profits. As an example, in the past four years alone, to help pay for modernization, new mines, new mills like the one we just told you about, U.S. Steel has borrowed $800 million. This is because U.S. Steel wants to keep on being a top contender for business. This means having faith in the future and risking money for new and better mills to make new and better steels. This is what competition is all about. It brings out the best in a product, in an industry, and in a company like U.S. Steel, one of more than 80 steel-making companies competing in a growing America. We return to Act Two of The Inner Panic from New York. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. Why aren't these orders staffed in yesterday? They rushed out for traffic, that's why. They're screaming upstairs. These orders are late. I only got two hands, Bob. Well, get a move on, will you? Come on, fellas, move it. Hey, Lenny, come on over here a little, will you? Now, look, we babied you for three weeks now. Today, you learn, you learn the postage meter, OK? Uh, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, Bonnie, only I thought... You that... work here, don't you? Yeah, if Pete can handle it, so can you. It's easy. You see? Month, day, time. Yeah, ah, come on, Charlie. All right, now you batch them up like this, you keep them level, you keep them in front of you, and you feed them one at a time. Only watch out for her. She jumps around like a dancing Dora. All right, uh... Right in that slot there. In this... In the slot, right. Well, go ahead. Push it, push it all the way in. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything, Bonnie. You just got right, So don't act like a scared rabbit all the time. Shut up! Bonnie, I, I don't want to mess the thing up. I just... Lenny, okay. You take it easy. Take it as slow as you have to at first, okay? Now go ahead, feed it. I don't think it doesn't seem to work. There we are. All right, try it. <laughs> you didn't have it on. Well, I make mistakes too, fella, you know. There we are. Uh, easy, right? Geez, can't you bolt this thing down? Do I look dumb? Now, look, I've been trying to get them to bolt this thing down for the past four years now, but they're not going to do it because shipping department comes up and takes it downstairs. They use it too, understand? I see. Okay. What are you looking at? Oh, nothing, only it's uh, almost 10 o'clock and... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Sylvia will be down for the tally. Oh, well, get that out of the way as fast as you can. This stuff has got to move, you understand? Right. Move! Right. Come on, fellas, let's go! It's, uh, it's your favorite time of day, huh? You know, I'm still trying to figure out what your type. Is it simple over there? Leave him alone, Pete. I don't know. He must have something special. I wish I knew what it was. Maybe it's sincerity. Hi. Hi. Hold it. I like Sylvia. Please, girlfriend, no gabbing today. He has a lot of work to do. A lot of work. Barney's terrible. I don't know what gets into him. Hey, were you using the postage meter? No, I was just learning. Oh, Barney wouldn't trust anybody with it. He must like you. He's always telling me how slow I am. He'd say that to a jet pilot. Sylvia, you are going to be up in the cafeteria today? Sure, why? Oh, no reason. I just wanted to ask you something. Why? Well, it's nothing important. Well, now you've got me all curious. Well, it's just something my friend Mickey wanted me to ask you, that's all. Something nice? Come on, a couple of you guys. Help me get this into the store. Uh, what do you think that's like? We better, we better do this work. Bonnie wants these orders out. I get teased upstairs about how long I'm down here every day. 
You used to telephone for the figures before, didn't you? Too many mistakes. You stopped the day I came, huh? Well, Barney thought you might not like to use the phone at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Freeze up. Even when you know who's on the other end? You never know who's on the other end. Well, it's silly to be afraid of a telephone. I'm going to call. Someday I'm going to call for the tally. What's the first number? Overlay 20. You read the numbers today, Lenny. Why? I don't know. I just thought about it. But you said until I got used to it. Are you afraid I'll criticize, Lenny? Do you think I'd criticize? Overlay 20. It's it's special delivery, Los Angeles. Uh, 22. It's gonna take forever. Teletypes. Uh, 19. That's 19, not nine. I've got 19. See. Don't be so quick to think something's wrong. There's nothing wrong. Hey, you know, I... I finally thought of a compliment to pay you back. I like your hair. It's short like that. Sylvia! Uh, I don't understand any of these figures. You're gonna have to come in here and straighten me out. You sure do enjoy those tallies, don't you, Lenny? No, oh, no, I, I call that making out with the ladies. Come on, Pete, now cut it out, huh? This machine's all I can worry about right yes, now. Yes, sir, this guy, Lenny's got something all right. I don't have anything, Pete. Well, you must have something. Hey, maybe it's a golden tongue. Oh, pay no attention to him, Lenny. He just thinks he's smart. Anybody going upstairs for lunch? Yeah, I am, but uh, I don't know about Lenny here. Yeah, well, I was supposed to meet somebody, but... Yeah, oh, uh, what's the name reserving you a table for... Two? Well, that's not funny, Pete. <laughs> Come on, Lenny, let's go. Lenny! The, 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 the lack of love. <laughs> you mean a l l lousy lover, don't you, Pete? Yeah, yeah, come on. shouldn't even talk to you. I saw you in the lunchroom laughing at Pete's stupid jokes. I waited at my table the whole hour. I'm sorry, Sylvia. I, I just forgot. You didn't forget. You looked straight at me. If there's something you wanted to ask me, I, I thought it might be important. No, I, it wasn't anything important. Good night, Lenny. Yeah. Uh, good night, Pete. See you. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, Pete. Don't laugh when he's being mean like that. Pete's all right. He's okay. He's not all right. I went out on a date with him once. That was a mistake. I thought he was some kind of a human octopus or something. Besides, I'm choosy who I go out with. It has to be someone nice. Lenny, if you were going to ask me out or anything, I'd go. Is that what you're going to ask? No, it wasn't anything like that. Oh, I guess I put my foot in. Good night, Lenny. Yeah, good night, Sylvia. I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Sure. She said she'd go out with it. She practically gave you a golden invitation. I mean, she asked you. She did practically give you a golden invitation, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, I just... I
couldn't ask her. I just couldn't. Well, for crying out loud. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it, buddy. I'll get you a blind date for Saturday, okay? Oh, no, yeah. I'm not going huh? on any blind dates again. Uh -uh. Well, okay, buddy. Stay in your room and be a hermit, why don't you? Count all your money. You want to get out for a Coke? It's on you. I'm busted. All right, I'll be out in a minute. Yeah. Well, here's my jacket anyway, you know? You left it outside. Yeah. Hey, you haven't touched this thing yet, have you? Oh, no, I haven't had time lately. I've been too busy. Too busy, huh? Well, if you're doing something about Sylvia quick, you'll have the whole weekend to finish it, won't you? I'll wait for you outside. Well, summit conference? Ah, uh, sort of. Girls? Ah, uh, sort of. Hey, <laughs> is Lenny stuck on Sylvia, that girl down at the office? I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. you men. Huh? You stick together like thieves. You think I don't know when there's something brewing? Well, she's just a girl. He ends up boo to me. Oh, Mickey, I'm on your side. And his and hers. Look, I can depend on you to help him, can't I? Well, of course you can. You know that. Mickey. Huh? <laughs> That's because you're so good to us. <laughs> hey. Hey, Lenny, hurry up there, will you, buddy? I mean, you place my... Mailroom Charlie. Hold on. Lenny, for you, pick it up on 617. Sounds like Sylvia. Look, come on. Unless you're supposed to come down here for the tally. What's going on, Charlie? my desk right now, and I need the tally. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, okay, good point. Sylvia? Look, I'm... Sorry about yesterday. It's all right, Lenny. It's all right. No, no, I wasn't really angry or, or anything. Yeah, well, uh, I did want to ask you out, you know. Uh, Saturday night to a movie. A double date. I'd be very happy to go out with you, Lenny. Only don't wait so long next time, huh? Smart. She say yes. There's no telling some girl's taste. How's your bowling? I'm getting my September lineup ready, and I'm desperate. I'm putting you in. Well, Monday's my late night. Well, starting September Thursday is your late night. There's a pencil, a pencil. <laughs> you do know how to bowl, I hope. I would don't expect miracles. I... Who expects miracles? You don't have to be good. You just have to be there. I score all the points anyway. Oh, let's see. Hey, uh, you're never serious about anything, are you? What do I got to be serious about? Relax, that's my motto. Have a good laugh at yourself once in a while. You live longer. Hey, do you join the team or are you too cheap to rent shoes on Monday nights? Yeah, put me down. Okay. Hey, kid, one more thing. You don't have to kill yourself around here, you know. You're making out okay. Hello, Sylvia. Oh, you forgot to come down for the tally. Well, this isn't the mailroom anymore. It's a lover's lane. A lover's lane. Shut up. I had a very nice time, Lenny. I like Mickey. He's a lot of fun. And Ruth is very pretty. Yeah. So are you. Well, I won't fight with you about it. Sylvia, uh, can we sit down here a second? Sure. This isn't a brownstone stoop, it's a, a lover's lane. <laughs> Barney, guy's a nut, isn't he? He sure is. 
Vinny, why don't you surprise me sometime and call me for the tally? Yeah, imagine what Barney'd say about that. I bet a dozen girls call you up at home and you don't freeze up. No. No, they don't. You. You probably have a lot of boyfriends, huh? I wouldn't say a lot. I have a few. Sylvia. Would you be my girl? I don't know, Lenny. I, I'd like to, but I'll have to think about it. Is that all right? Oh, you sure? Yeah, I guess so. Mickey's the one the girls chase Lenny, all the time. have you ever tried to do anything about your stuttering? Why? What makes you bring that up? Oh, nothing. It's, it's not that you asked me to be your girl. Well, there must be some reason. Well, it's, it's just that you get hurt so easily. Well, Lenny, I hope you don't mind. I talked to my English teacher at night school about you. Well, now, what did you want to do that for, Sylvia? Well, I didn't say anything, who you were or anything. I, I just thought he could help. Please don't be angry. What did he tell you? Same old stuff? Well, he, he asked me if you had been in speech classes, and I didn't know. I was in all of them. Talk slow, they said, and breathe right. Look, I tried, and they tried. Benny, you are angry. I, I just thought that they have a speech class. And I thought if you wanted to, we could take it together next term. I get nervous, too, when I have to speak in front of people. That's all, Lenny. That's all I meant. <laughs> you know, I'm a pretty lucky guy. I really am. I mean, I've got so many things now that I never had before, you know? I got a job, and Bonnie wants me to join the bowling team, now night school. I'm gonna be busy, you know? And for the first time in my life, I'm really going to be busy. Lenny, my teacher told me people who stutter can sing in a group sometimes. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we used to do that in class. Well, could you sing if I sang? What do you mean, now? Well, sure. <laughs> that is after one o'clock. That's crazy. Oh, no, it isn't. Come on, I want to hear you sing. Well, I don't know any songs. You know, I don't know what to sing. Hey, wait a minute. I do know a song. One I've wanted to sing for a long time. Good, which one? C -c 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 Lenny, don't do that. Hey, I want to see what the fun of it is, Sylvia. I want to have a good laugh at myself. Why does it you live longer? I want to sing it. Come on. Sing it with me, huh? Come on. <laughs> and you better stutter. <laughs> All right. Come on. C -c -c Katie, beautiful Katie, you're the only g -g -g girl that I adore. I'm not getting temperamental. I just think that postage meter's too risky with two guys working on it. That's hey, all. Suppose you get sick one day. I'm not gonna get sick. And if I do, uh, Charlie can handle it. I tell you, that guy Lenny's clumsy with it anyway. Go take a look at Golden Boy. Hey, kid, kid, hold it, hold it, hold it. What are you so excited about? Oh, nothing, honey. Uh, hold it. No one's to get excited on Monday mornings. It tires us old folks out. Now, that's orders from headquarters, understand? Right. Honey. Easy. Right. Move it, fellas. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Mailroom, Lynette Stevenson speaking. Uh, uh, tally ready. Lenny, I knew you'd call. How do you feel? <laughs> no, that's because I kept you out so late Saturday. You don't know what I'm doing, sir. I'm doing something right now no two people ever did around here before. You see, I got... I got the tally going with one hand, and I got the postage meter going with the other, that's all. That sounds like bragging to me. What? <laughs> yes, I hear it. 
should see her hop around. Let Bonnie tell me I'm slow now. I'm the best man he's got working down here, that's all. Man. Man, you've done it now. You have done Get it. Get out. What the devil did you do here? You know that machine cost $750? 750 bucks, now look at it. Just look at it. Barney. Oh, for crying out loud, your mother didn't tell me you had dropsy, too. Barney. Well, she didn't tell me that. Well, say something, stupid. Don't just squat there, say something. I don't know. Well, say something, you jerk. Well, go ahead, what are you gonna say? Say something. Shut up! You shut your big, fat mouth! This is the United States Steel Hour. A gal can be a rave with her roasts, a whirlwind at whipping up cakes. She can be as adept at boiling bouillabaisse as she is at boiling water. Go from French to Italian to Oriental-style cooking with the greatest of ease. And she can still feel as flat, as flat as a pancake when it comes to cleaning up the pots and pans. It's a job she can't hide from. She can't make it go away, but she can make short work of it when her cookware is easy to clean stainless steel cookware. Stainless, so hard, so smooth, grease and foods can't get a good grip on it. So hard, so smooth, it cleans quick. It cleans clean. Easy cleaning stainless is the nicest thing that's happened to cooking since the modern range replaced the old coal stove. Read all about stainless cookware in U.S. Steel's big color ad in this week's Life magazine. Now's the time to buy new stainless cookware because it's featured in stores everywhere as the steel product of the month for September. Look for big gleaming displays of the newest styles in stainless cookware wherever you see this sign. Cooking's easier with easy to clean stainless steel. See and feel how the new stainless cookware is light and easy to handle, yet so tough it'll last a lifetime. There's nothing to chip or peel or wear off. And whether you're buying a colander or a chafing dish, anything from cooking tools to cookie sheets, count on stainless to stay bright. The beauty of stainless is not just the way it looks when it's brand new, but the way it will look after many, many years of good cooking. So look for the tag that tells you, the cookware you're buying is made of lifetime stainless steel. And stop in soon to see all that's new and bright in the steel product of the month displays in stores near you. Start making your cooking as easy as only easy to clean stainless steel can make it. We return to act three of The Inner Panic from New York. Your friend put on a real show here. You should have seen it. He nearly wrecked the joint throwing that machine around. And you should have heard him tell Barney off. What did he say to Barney? Plenty. Now, he's through, I'll tell you that. Sylvia. Barney, Barney, what happened was my fault. Oh, go back to your desk, Sylvia, will you? It was my fault. I kept after him to use a phone. You know how I kept after him. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Do you know? You don't know anything about it. Did he throw it? Did he do it on purpose? Yeah, he threw it. OK, now will you go? Get back to work, will you? Then he won't be working here anymore. What does it look like to you? We 
can't save any, any of it, Barney. The regulating mechanism's shot. Oh, I told him. I told him it would happen someday. Well, we better see those guys upstairs, but what'll I say to them? What do you mean, what do you say? Well, you know them. They'll want the whole case history. Okay, give it to them. Well, kid had an accident. Could happen to anybody. You, me. Oh, come on. What are you, deaf, blind? Charlie, you saw him. You heard him. But Barney, you opened up on the kid. Everybody heard about his mother. What do you expect? Well, if he wants out what he was doing, it wouldn't have happened. Come on off it, Barney. First, it's don't let on she ever came up here. Then you're the one who blows it. He'll take it out on her now. Okay, so it's his mother's turn now. So call her, Barney. That way she'll know what to expect, at least. Guinness? Oh, Barney! Oh, I'm sorry I was out shopping. Is anything wrong? Well, I think he's home. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What happened? Oh. Oh, that's too bad. He swings and he fouls it off. The count is now one and two. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. There's one away and a runner on first. There's no score. Lenny? The runner leads off first. There's the stretch in the pitch. Lenny. And he swings and fouls it off again, and the count remains at one and two. Don't answer phones anymore if that's what you want to know. Well, that was Barney. I was listening to that ball game, Mom. Oh, Lenny. All right, I broke a machine. So what? I know, I know, but what are you doing home? It was an accident. Barney's not the kind to hold that against you. How do you know? You've never met him, have you? Well, I don't think you'd understand about that right now. Why did you go down there to see him, Mom? Why? I don't know. It just seemed the right thing to do at the time. Oh, Lenny, you were tearing yourself in two, telling yourself nobody wanted you. I couldn't watch that happen day after day. I had to do something. You said you wanted a chance. Well, all I did was ask Barney to give it to you. I thought I was something this morning. Oh, I thought I was the greatest guy in the whole world. But you did the work. You proved yourself. Why did he have to yell at me like that? Standing there yelling at me. Say something. Well, I said something all right. Shut your big, fat mouth. Oh, so that's it. Yeah, that's it. Didn't he tell you about it? No, no, he didn't tell me. But I'm going to tell you something. Turning on Barney like that was a mean, cruel thing to do. He turned on me first. I don't care how it happened. You had no right to hurt him. You have no right to hurt anyone. Barney handed you everything on a platter, and this is the way you repay him. Oh, what do you expect me to do, Mom? Just stand there? I don't know, but I know what you're going to do now. You're going right back down there and apologize. I can't. Oh, yes, you can. I'm never going back there again. That's exactly what they want. Here he comes. Here comes la 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 Lenny. What do you want me to do, Lenny? Feel sorry for you? I'm tired of feeling sorry for you. I'm tired of working nights so I can be here every day when you come home. I'm tired of worrying about you. All right, all right, all right, Mom. I know I'm such a big burden. Well, I've let you be a burden, and so is Barney. It was wrong of us to treat you as if you were somebody special. Oh, Lenny. Things are always going to be a little more difficult for you than for most people. But that doesn't excuse what you did today. You think being a stutterer is the hardest thing in the world, don't you? Well, I'll tell you something harder. Being a friend of one, like Barney, that's harder. And being the mother of a stutterer, that's harder too.
Are you still here? Don't you have a class somewhere? I decided not to go tonight. Well, what are you hanging around for? No reason. I'll buy you a sandwich. No, thanks, Pete. Well, I can't do any business here. You didn't have to show. I, I already did all your work for you. Lenny. Sylvia. I thought I... you might come back. I hoped you would. I... Lenny, no one minds if you're not perfect. They worry about you because you mind so much. Apologize for what I said to you. Yeah? Well, uh, thanks a lot. It's a little late for that stuff. I never meant to talk that way to you, Bonnie. Not to you. Well, you should have thought of that before. You think a boy's supposed to take that kind of talk? You think I'm going to forget about it? Do you think any of my boys will? Look, well, I've got a lot of work to do. I can't talk now. Yeah, well, can I help out? When a guy quits, he quits. Besides, you're fired. You know, I made a mess of everything. Just let me fix it up again, all You right? can't fix nothing up, so stop trying. Well, I want to pay for the postage meeting, you know, something every week. Pay for it? It'll take you four years and three months. Forget it. We can't wait that long. I want to come back, Barney. I like it here. I like coming here. Well, you wouldn't like it for long. Not with all these guys knowing how you got the job and all. No, it wouldn't work. I'll make it work. Look, I'll give you a reference, okay? I'll make it a good one. You'll need it. Barney, I want this job. What's the big deal here? You gave me a break here, and I blew it, that's all. Now, just give me a chance to fix it up again. I'll do anything you want. I'll work my head off for you. I'm not going back to what I was, Barney. You've got to let me work. Hey, kid. What are you doing here? Just wanted to see how things were. Now, your boyfriend's just lucky I'm stuck for somebody on a bowling team. Relax, Barney. You'll live longer. On October 3rd, the United States Steel Hour presents Darren McGavin, starring in The Young Avengers on October 3rd, produced by the Theater Guild on the United States Steel Hour. Competition picks the winners. Competition sharpens skills. Competition brings out the best in a man and in a product. Today, more than 20 companies make television sets. 
at least 15 companies make electric toasters. More than 30 companies make coffee makers. And more than 80 companies make the steels that go into our modern products. More than 80 steel companies competing for business every day. To meet this tougher competition, U.S. Steel has brought out an average of one new or improved product every month in recent years. U.S. Steel, one of more than 80 steel-making companies competing in a growing America. Here's a message from our alternate program. On September 26th, the Armstrong Circle Theater will begin its eighth season of bringing you exciting true dramas with The Cross and the Dragon. That's two weeks from tonight on the Armstrong Circle Theater. Now, here is tonight's cast, starring Tommy Sands as Lenny. Cynthia Pepper as Sylvia. Special guest star, Glenda Farrell as Mrs. Stevenson. And Simon Oakland as Barney. Technical consultation provided by the National Hospital for Speech Disorders. The United States Steel Hour from New York. This is Andre Baruch speaking. <laughs>